Hello once again everyone. So, since so many of us are still waiting on our uh, Helgi Halberd head orders, as well as been doing a decent amount of core staff or uh, have an interest in armor in general, I figured I'd do a video going over some more axe exercises. This has been a long time since the first one I did, and I don't have anything else to do. So, first and foremost, uh, all of these exercises can be practiced either with a core staff, um, an axe if you have it, or something along those lines. The important thing you need to do is just designate one end to be the hammer end. Um, I'm currently using a Purple Heart trainer, uh, the big old rubber mallets that we used to, used to use. Now, I will say, as far as doing halberd or axe work, this is much more suited to an axe given its length. Um, a halberd is going to usually be a little taller than that, um, or sometimes much taller. But either way, still works out just the same. All I need to do is move my grip down. But let's go really quickly over the parts of the axe and the halberd they mostly still apply. So first and foremost, you have a dog, which is a spike on top, followed then by either an axe or a hammerhead, or sometimes a hammer or a spike on the back. This area here, um, Lejeune refers to it as the cross, which is pretty much your shilt um, slash your, um, your strong on a sword. Here we have a little rondel, uh, just made of leather. Some axes will have this, some halberds will even have this. Um, it doesn't do a ton, but it does a little bit, so I am glad that it's there. Um, following that, we have the haft itself, some in Lejeune refers to it as the demiosh. The reason I'm using Lejeune terms, by the way, is because they go over all the pieces. So, And then finally, we have the Q, which is below my hand, essentially ending with another dog. So, all together, what this essentially gives you is you have pointy bit, hooky slash smashy bit, hooky slash smashy bit, parry bit slash hook, um, wrestling slash parry, parry slash attack with thrusts, basically. So, really a very versatile weapon. Um, the only difference in regards between ways you want to be using this in regards to being a halberd versus using it in regards to an axe generally is going to come down to which foot you have for it slash which hand you're using. Now there's a bunch of different sources out there on using the axe um, and quite a few even use uh, quite a few of the later ones also do you know halberd they do bill hook um, in fact some of the axe sources even show different styles used. Uh, Peter Faulkner's um, axe source one of them is I swear swinging a bill hook a military bill but Either way, um, if you're looking at later period stuff, so for example, Myers Halberd, which is what I'm more familiar with, um, you're going to be seeing left foot forward stances pretty much always because what's going to be happening is we're fighting in formation. And so as such, my cuts need to come down from the left side so that I'm working with everyone else around me. Not that you couldn't still fight one-on-one -on -one this way um, versus most of the poleaxe sources, you're going to be standing left foot forward so that way you can utilize your passing steps just like you would with your long sword. Um, that's not to say they don't have some stances where you are right foot forward. Or then you can just throw all that out the window and study uh, the anomalous, anonymous Bolognese source where every time you strike from the right, you're right-handed. Every time you strike from the left, you're left-handed. So bear that in mind. Really, I'd say study them all and apply it to the weapon you're using. But either way, some general exercises for you. So first and foremost, let's talk about footwork and posture. So. When it comes to utilizing an axe or a halberd, the biggest thing is you need a nice wide stance. You do not want to be caught upright, right? You want to be nice and wide, nice and dug into the ground, especially if you're using any sort of armor. And your footwork is going to be relatively simple. You're going to have a cresseres, so advancement of the front foot, decresseres, bringing the back foot up, and of course those put together, it's going to be gathering steps, forward and back. You're going to have instances where you need to simply do an advance or a retreat. You're going to have small lunges on attacks. You're going to have passing steps on attacks. You will also sometimes find, depending upon what you're looking at, you will find oblique passes where I'm stepping more out to the side and then I can accompany that with a compass step to turn it into a triangle step. So one, two, you'll find that quite a lot. Um, that works on both sides. Sometimes you'll even find instances where you step behind yourself. This is more halberd. Uh, you're not gonna see this in poleaxe, but you'll step back behind then out. Um, so bear that in mind. I don't recommend you do that in too much armor. But either way, lots of footwork, but the only one we're not really going to be doing is cross line passes going forward. So 
all that together, just keep an eye on my feet if you're looking for what specific footwork to do. But handwork and posture, like I said, gonna be upright, and most of the time, regardless of which source you're studying, you're going to be in something similar to Vam Tag to start off with. So in this case, if I'm going for more Polax, be it Le Jou style or uh, more German style or even Italian, right? I am standing with the head on my right side and then the Q defends my lower left. So if they cut for here, I can move across and defend. If they try to fake me out, I still have that there to defend me. But if I am looking for more halberd stuff, then now my opening is here, my left foot is forward, they're not going to attack into this line. If they attack the here, I can defend myself. I can drop the cue over, relatively simplistic. Though, like I said, you just want to split the middle and do bolognese. You can just put your other foot forward, same idea. But your posture needs to be erect. Your body needs to be balanced and you want to have nice reserved steps for the majority of this. And when striking, you want to make sure you're reaching out and using your body not letting yourself spin or go down. So, let's go over some handwork, shall we? Now there's a couple different grips you can take. You can do thumbs to point, thumb to thumb. You could even do thumbs to cue. That doesn't come up a ton, but it does appear. Really, you're going to need to be switching between them, depending upon what you're looking to do. Thumbs to thumb gives you a lot more leverage on both ends. Thumbs to point gives you a lot more reach and will feel a little more natural for sometimes. So, be ready to vary it up. You'll even see some depictions where people are standing with their palm essentially open, so that way they can transition into one or the other. That certainly works. The only thing I'd say is that if you are standing that way, make sure you're on the attack, because if someone surprises you, you may transition into a grip you're not looking to. You may even lose control of the axe, so bear that in mind. But everything can be overcome with practice. Now, when it comes to hand switching, it's going to be much the same as what we did with the quarter staff. You're just going to slide your hands down and trade your feet around, right? Or not, if you're looking to move into a halberd position. Now, if you can't quite do it with your feet, you can of course practice like we did with quarterstaff, just sliding it over and back and forth. Very good practice. If you're using thumb to thumb, the same exact thing works. It's just usually thumb to thumb, you're not going to need to transition sides very often. It's really thumb to uh, tip that you're going to be needing to do that. Either way though, let's talk about some basic strikes. So, there's a couple different places you can put your hands on the axe and they will have different effects. So, if I put my hand up by this rondel, I have really good control over this. It's very easy for me to make hard percussive strikes. The only downside is they're relatively short, which isn't too bad of a thing if I'm wearing armor, mind you. Um, the benefit of me having my hands so close is that, like I said, it's very easy to control. I also have a decent amount of cue to work with, but we'll come back to that again in a moment. So what I recommend you do is you get used to either, you can stand whichever foot forward, but you might want to start out right foot forward and just extend, extend, you start adding a little bit of pull into it just to get used to striking. Then you can start moving your hand down a little bit. I move this hand down as well, just getting used to fighting with the bigger lever. Then you can start adding in some slide. Nice and simple, really. All those strikes are great, and you may need to use different ones at different times, um, just depending upon what action you're doing. And the actions that you will study, I'm not going to go into too many specific ones, I'm just going over general use today, but depending upon what you study, just look for what they're looking for you to do. Now, a general bit of advice that we receive in some sources is not to strike past your man. So, for example, Le Joux says you should always end up basically point forward after you finish your strike. However, there are other systems, be they Halberd or Fiore, for example, where they show the strike ending in a low guard. So what does this leave us with? Which is the way you should do it? I would say it varies. My personal advice would be, if you're going to strike all the way through, you must be ready to turn it into something else. It should never be an end point. If you're looking to strike two, no worries, right? So. Just for sake of, let's go over some options for flow with that in mind. So if we're looking to strike through, what we're going to need to do is make sure that our strikes don't terminate down here. They come down and then they turn into something else. So for example, let's just be nice and simple. Boom, up, out. Nice and simplistic. 
down, rip up, strike out. Very simple. Alternatively, if I want to put a little bit of spin on it, boom, up. Don't want to turn my hands over. I don't know why I did that, right? Boom, up, through. Something along those lines. Or if I wanted to strike from the other side with my hands uncrossed, right? Boom, up, through. But either way, I'm always finishing that final hit into a middle guard if I can, right? Something point forward. And as long as you kind of keep that in mind, you can utilize strikes that go through a person without much concern because I'm always ready to have my tip forward again. Even when I strike past my man going from, a, uh, from below, my cue comes forward and that can help defend me. So these are some things to consider. Like I said, I won't bury you in instances. I just want you to think about this general concept. Now, when it comes to striking with a pattern, an official pattern, let's go ahead and look at the Meyer cutting pattern. So, Meyer cutting pattern where we're striking through works best if you are uh, thumbs to tip. And what it's going to require is we'll strike through, but now I am going to need to transition. So you can either do this as a half cut transition, or you can keep it flowing. But note, you'll have to be a little speedy on that. So, that basically boils down to as strike either out or through, slide your hand back, strike up, slide your hand back, strike up, slide your hand over, strike down. And this one I'd recommend ending here, or if you do go through, be sure to slide back up. Relatively simple. You can also add thrusts in between if you wish. Now when it comes to striking to our person, very good for thumb to thumb, um, also good for thumb to tip, doesn't really matter. But if you wanted to look at the same pattern, we're going to emphasize the thrust a little more since we're going to end up point at them. So down, thrust, up, thrust, up, thrust, and down, thrust. Now you might say why strike with this end? It can be used either offensively or defensively. You can knock aside an incoming attack very easily, or alternatively, I can suppress someone's arm and set up a thrust, or just suppress someone's arm, then come over with my hit. It's a lot more versatile than you think, and it has certain advantages that this guy doesn't. So, the big downside of putting your axe end forward is that one, the weight of your weapon is now extended, and since it's extended, it can be taken from you. It's very easy to hook. If you're the one hooking, it's great, but if someone is hooking you, you've got to do something. However, if I put my Q end forward, there's not a whole lot to actually grab onto. Even if you do hook it, it's pretty easy for me to slide out, or alternatively, I can turn my axe onto you. So bear that in mind. So, these are all patterns that you should do both ways, um, striking from the other side as well. But another thing you should also practice is just in general, quickly thrusting with the Q on a low or high target with both sides. Um, you can also do it from below, works exactly the same. Now the nice thing about that is that when I am standing here and go to execute my Q thrust, all the weight is back here, which means that it's very quick and easy for my tip to come up and help defend me. Now if you're looking for something a little bit more halberd flavored, then we do have another suggestion, which is basically cutting through the rows. It's going to be sort of a figure eight pattern. All we're going to do here is we'll stand up in the high guard and you're just going to drop it down beneath you. And you can do a grip transition here if you wish. Up through, back down, over, down, rip up, and we're at the beginning. So up, down, down, up. Up, down, down, up. Very simplistic, very good for you, very good to do with music. It's a little more uh, halberd flavored one. Alternatively, you can just look for some general um, actions that put your tip out there. So for example, strike, gather, thrust, recover, retreat, all that good stuff is great. Um, if you wanted to, you could also practice the one-handed swing um, that Meyer does show. He shows that guy um, at one point, which if you want to practice it, by all means, just make sure you warm up your wrist plenty and do it with the staff first. These are all some general actions. Another thing that you definitely want to get used to doing is kind of your, and if you've done a pole axe, this can kind of be your sneaky technique. So if you're fighting halberd, you can at any time turn it into an axe. 
All you need to do is just transition your hands over and strike. So, nice little trick there. But either way, these are just some general little exercises that you can practice. Not specific instances, though some of them will work. Just think about the main core tenets, right? Reserve your axe. It's what does the killing. It can also be hooked, though, and don't let it get taken away from you. Use the points. It's not just a big smashy weapon. It's still got two spears on either end. Make good use of the Q, both in offense and defense. Reserve your footwork and use everything you know, right? Be sure if you're learning halberd, look at some axe actions. If you're learning axe, look at some halberd actions. They're not so different. I mean, they are a little bit, but they're really more like fraternal twins than they are, you know, cousins. And then the final bit of advice, if you're gonna strike through, it needs to be flowing into something. If you're gonna strike two, follow it with a thrust or a pull and then a thrust. But either way, those are just some basic axe actions um, and some drills to practice on your own and some advice. Um, hopefully that's helpful. If you wanna see more techniques on axe or halberd, um, for halberd, I'd recommend, uh, he doesn't have many videos up on it, unfortunately, uh, but Bjorn Ruther of the uh, uh, Hamburg School in Germany. Um, you can find him pretty easily. He's got some pretty good videos on it. Um, he's the one who uh, gave me that um, figure eight pattern. Alternatively, uh, if you're looking for more axe stuff, I'd recommend pursuing the Knightly Arts. They do Le Joux mostly, um, but they're great guys and they have just great production value on their stuff. So definitely go check those out and keep these basic bits of advice in mind, form your own, and hopefully, We'll all get to fight each other again soon. But either way, thank you very much for watching, and we'll go over some other techniques another time.